Welcome to Roof Screen. In this video, I'm going to give an overview and demonstrate the installation process of our most popular frame, the SC3, with Rotolock Square Bay supports. While this overview will serve as a great general guide, each project is custom engineered and has its own set of specifications. Therefore, it's essential you refer to your custom shop drawings included with each and every system we ship, as well as the roof screen installation manual. This is the SC3 frame build. Here are the tools that you're going to need. Be sure to also have your personal protective equipment. Okay, let's start with the base supports. Base supports act as the main anchor to the roof structure. They're designed to be compatible with any type of roof structure and come in various heights. 8 inches, 10 inches, 12 inches, 14 inches, and beyond with the use of extensions to accommodate rooftop insulation. For a real project, they must be anchored into a roof member, not just this table or decking. How to attach the base supports, including the type and the quantity of fasteners, will be specified in your shop drawings. Flashings and gaskets are an important part of the system's waterproofing. Depending on the type of roof system your project has, the flashings may be made of different materials such as galvanized sheet metal, lead, TPO, and PVC. It's important that flashings are no higher than the top of the base support or it'll prevent the base cap from seating properly. Additionally, flashing must also not be lower than a half inch below the top of the base support for proper waterproofing. Once the roofing is done, gaskets are installed next. The gasket is for added protection from moisture infiltration by snow, ice, and splashing water. As you can see, I'm applying the sticky side of the gasket to the flashing, making sure the top edge is flush with the top of the flashing. I'm making sure to press firmly on the sides, making sure that that gasket is not going anywhere. Because each frame has two base supports, I am doubling my efforts with the gasket on the front base support, making way for the base caps. Once flashings and gaskets are fitted, the base caps, which are a part of these assemblies, are installed over the base supports and flashings. The sides of the base cap provide a counter flashing while compressing the gasket for watertight seal. Part A12 is the base cap for the back of the frame and part A10 is the base cap for the front of the frame. Just pop that on the top of the base support and slide it on down. Base assemblies are fastened to the base supports using our B11 bolts with sealing washers. To prevent cross threading, insert and twist the bolts by hand first. Once I've inserted them all by hand, next comes using the impact driver to tighten them all up. The B11 bolts are meant to be driven in a crisscross pattern, just like you would when tightening lug nuts on your truck wheels. Note these washers are one-time use only. Once it's compressed, it should not be reused if the bolt is removed. Once I'm done with the front, then I move on to the back. I'm using a crisscross pattern here again. And in just a moment, you'll see it compress completely, creating that watertight seal. Our galvanized steel tubing is two and a half inches OD and comes in either 11 gauge or 16 gauge. Tubes will be marked with a frame number and an H, V, or D for horizontal, vertical, or diagonal tubing. Frame numbers can be found in the shop drawings. Additionally, a cut list is provided with the packing slip. The cut list will provide the dimensions of all the tubes in case the markings are not readable. If the tubes are left in the sun for too long, they may fade. For this demonstration, we're working on frame number one, so locate the tube labeled 1H and then insert 1N into the A12 assembly, right, the rear, and then through A10 assembly, the front. The rotolocks allow the assemblies to align perfectly to accept the horizontal tube. Occasionally, seizing can occur between stainless steel nuts and bolts. Using anti-seize will prevent this. Once the horizontal is in, attach the A13 field connector to the front of the tube. Use four S10 screws, but the shop drawings will specify how many screws are to be installed in each assembly. 
Notes about installing tech screws. Use a cordless impact driver. Cordless drills will work, but the impact driver will work better. Don't use big electric drills because they don't stop quickly when you release the trigger and it'll break the screw head. The screw is considered properly installed when the shoulder of the screw seats against the substrate. Don't try to keep driving them down even if there's a slight gap between the fitting and the tube. Rotolocks make for easy alignment to other frames in your layout. A straight layout typically uses a laser or a string for alignment. Once the front to back adjustment is set, rotate the A13 so that the field connector that will hold the vertical tube is vertical. Once aligned, come back with tech screws and secure the horizontal in place. This particular frame type, the SC3 and other frames with front cantilevers allow for front to back adjustment. So some variance is okay. The standard variance is about five inches overall, but refer to your shop drawings to verify. If you're building a non cantilevered frame, there is no front to back adjustment and the base supports must be exactly lined up to each other or the face of the screen will show any variance that exists. Next, install the thread cutting screws, part S44 in the aligned holes of the rotolock feature of the base assembly. Half of all of the S44s are screwed in from one side and the other half are screwed in from the other side. The quantity of S44 thread cutting screws is critical to the strength of the roof screen frame and its ability to resist wind loads. Please refer to your shop drawings for exact quantity required. Next, slip the vertical tube into the A13 assembly. Hold the tube in position with the top of the tube at the desired height and mark the bottom. This makes it so you can bring the vertical back down, attach it, and then bring it back up. I'm using an impact driver to drive in those tech screws again. Please check out the install manual at this point for guidance on installing the lateral brace assemblies. Since we're not installing multiple frames in a row, we're skipping this step. Moving on to the diagonal member, slide another A13 onto one end of the diagonal pipe and attach the tech screws. Make sure you flip it over and get tech screws onto the other side. Using a torpedo level and a quick clamp, make sure the vertical tube is plumb and then use the quick clamp to hold the diagonal member in place while you slide it on. Using a clamp will keep it from sliding too far down. Slide the A13 of the diagonal member over the vertical tube and fasten it with tech screws at the distance from the top of the tube as specified in your shop drawings. At this point, you may need to cut the pipe to its proper length in order to keep the vertical tube plumb. Mark it right before the connector tapers and use a skill saw or a sawzall with a metal cutting blade to make it happen. Remember your ear protection when cutting steel. Slip the now shorter diagonal tubes and connector onto the vertical, then into the A12 assembly. Make sure the vertical member is plumb. At this point, you'll wanna install the lateral braces into their prospective assemblies. Refer to the manual for this one, step 10, because this is just one frame, we're skipping the step. Make sure the vertical is plumb and secured into place with tech screws at the connector point. And then we'll move on to the rear base assembly to secure the diagonal in place. Now let's tighten all those bolts and ensure all tech screws are installed. I'm using an impact wrench to tighten all these bolts. At this point, we've built one entire SC3 frame. This is where you'll move on to the desired screen material, whether it's a ribbed panel, flush panels, or louvers.
At the end of each day or building each frame, it's important to vacuum all shavings. If you don't, all these metal shavings will rust, making for a pretty ugly stain around the surface of the roof and the base supports. And there you have it. You've reached the end of the SC3 frame build. We look forward to checking out your completed roof screen manufacturing equipment screen and maybe even feature it on our website or our social media. Please reach out to us regarding any questions you may have and thanks for watching.